Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this image right here shows us a recently discovered megastructure somewhere out there in the universe. An unusual formation that's currently referred to as the Giant Arc. And just like so many other megastructures or these really large formations in the universe, this one implies that there is something about the universe we don't really understand. But let's talk a little bit more about this because there's quite a lot here to uncover. And so it's important to start with some of these smaller objects here in order to grasp the scale of the objects we're talking about. Because in this particular case we're actually going to be obviously going outside of our own galaxy, outside of our own galactic cluster, and looking at something that's way 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 bigger than even some of the largest objects we've seen to date. And so once we sort of leave our own galaxy, the Milky Way, we'll find ourselves looking at a distance of about 10 million light years. And this is what we usually refer to as the local group of nearest galaxies. This is where galaxies like the Andromeda are, obviously the Milky Way and all its neighbors, and some of the other less known galaxies such as the Triangulum. And here's an image that sort of shows us some of the smaller neighbors around the Milky Way, the Andromeda and the Triangulum, with some of them only recently discovered. But as we start zooming out of this and start looking at other clusters, we'll find ourselves in what's known as the Virgo Supercluster. And this is of course a collection of various galactic groups all connected together and all sort of more or less moving into the same direction. With the average diameter here being approximately 110 million light years. Or roughly around 40 times the distance of the Andromeda Galaxy to the Milky Way. But not so long ago, the scientists looking at various local clusters also discovered that there is a larger supercluster all this is part of. Today this is referred to as the Laniakea supercluster, and in a nutshell it sort of kind of looks like this. This is roughly around 500-ish million light years in diameter and includes several superclusters all connected and all once again moving in the same direction. The direction of what's known as the the Great Attractor that's located somewhere right here in comparison to the Milky Way galaxy. But because this Great Attractor is more or less hidden behind large amounts of gas from the Milky Way galaxy, it's not entirely understood what it is just yet. Nevertheless, the Laniakea supercluster, which in this image you can see in yellow, forms a gravitationally connected superstructure. A structure that's, well, essentially similar to a lot of other similar structures in the universe. But theoretically speaking, or at least in terms of our, our understanding of the universe and how the things form in the universe, this does to some extent represent the limit of how big we believe the structures in the universe to be. Anything bigger than this should technically sort of float apart and not be connected gravitationally anymore. However, that's not really what the scientists in the last few decades have been discovering. More and more observations from various surveys have uncovered these gigantic megastructures or superstructures that seem to defy these limits. Some of them are billions of light years in size, some of them are even larger. Yet some of them seem to actually be nothing, they seem to contain absolutely nothing on the inside. For example, what you see right here represents a void. It's a void that's roughly around 1.5 billion light years across. And it's a void that's visible in the cosmic microwave background. And this is what's known as the Eridanus supervoid. It's one of those really really large superstructures that exist in the universe and does not really have a very good explanation just yet. But because it's a supervoid, it's more or less empty on the inside. But then there are actual structures as well, like for example this one right here known as the Sloan Great Wall. This is once again a gravitationally connected structure of various galaxies and various clusters that's about 1.37 billion light years in length. And when it was originally discovered back in 2003, it did create a few problems and a few concerns for the modern models of the formation of the universe. Then, approximately six years ago, or back in July of 2015, the scientists realized that something in this particular region about 9 billion light years away from planet Earth was also forming some sort of an unusual circular structure. Today this is known as GRB or Giant GRB Ring and it was discovered when these unusual gamma ray bursts all came from the same vicinity, from the same direction and seem to have been coming from a relatively similar structure of galaxies all sort of connected into a sort of a ring. Or here we're really talking about various galactic clusters, superclusters, connected in a ring-like formation. And this ring-like formation would be nearly 5.6 billion light-years across, making it one of the largest structures ever discovered. 
But because this was discovered using gamma ray bursts, or gamma ray burst mapping that is, it's still kind of disputed, just like the largest structure discovered using this method. The largest structure is right here, and this is known as the Corona Borealis Great Wall. It seems to be about 10 billion light years in length, and represents about 10% of the visible universe in terms of size. Once again, this was discovered by looking at the concentration of various gamma ray bursts, all coming from a relatively similar direction, suggesting a connection of galaxies. But since its discovery back in 2013, this was still sort of debated because maybe those gamma ray bursts came from different directions and were redirected to look like they came from this direction. And so the technique known as gamma ray burst mapping is sometimes believed to be not really accurate. But nevertheless, right now this does stand as the largest superstructure or megastructure ever discovered in the universe. But for this discovery, which is the object that's about 3.3 billion light years across and seems to represent yet another connection of various superclusters together, this giant arc was discovered using a very different method. A method that does definitely represent something a little bit more accurate in terms of its detection. Here it was discovered by using the light from quasars behind this object. As the quasar light passing through various galaxies on the way to our own planet absorbed the light from ionized magnesium present in these galaxies, it left a telltale mark that there were definitely galactic clusters present in those regions. And those galactic regions were forming some sort of a giant arc that also seems to be gravitationally connected into a single object. The object that's visible right here in the simulation produced by the scientists whose paper you can find in the description below. And just like with some of the other giant objects, it's extremely difficult to explain how this could have formed or what exactly is causing these super clusters to connect into this giant arc. According to the scientists behind this paper, it's almost impossible that this happened by chance. The probability that these galaxies aligned like this is like 0.0003%. And because this also represents about 1 15th in terms of the size of the observable universe, this does make it one of the largest giant structures ever discovered. And because of the technique used and the data provided by the Sloan Digital Survey, this makes this object an almost certain superstructure existing somewhere out there, unlike some of the previous ones I mentioned that are still sort of debated. But the problem here is of course, well, the cosmological principle that is currently believed to be the most accurate explanation for what happens in the universe does postulate that unfortunately when it comes to larger structures, matter should really be homogeneous, it should not really be clumpy, it should not connect into these large structures. As a matter of fact, one of the recent papers and one of the recent studies I discussed in one of the previous videos even suggests that matter seems to be less clumpy when it comes to various cosmological structures on smaller scales. And that's from some of the discoveries on the dark matter slash dark energy survey. And so in that sense, something really doesn't add up, because when it comes to larger structures, they do have a tendency to form these unusual clumpy formations and these unusual clumpy structures. Something doesn't really make sense, at least in our understanding and our current mathematical analysis of the universe as we believe it to be. So in summary, when it comes to smaller scale structures, the matter seems to be a little bit less clumpy than predicted, but when it comes to larger structures, it's more clumpy. It seems to be able to form these really large formations. And though the absolute limit for how big the structure should be is about 1.2 billion light years in length or in size, this one here is about three times that particular limit. So theoretically at least, it should not really exist. But it clearly does, and it doesn't seem to be a chance alignment. And so the explanation right now seems to be that, well, one, we don't really entirely understand the universe, which of course makes sense because there are still so many unexplained phenomena out there. Or the second explanation here could be that, well, maybe, just maybe, it's actually completely by chance. Maybe it is a chance alignment, and maybe it is a completely rare phenomenon that's probably going to be very difficult to find elsewhere. Nevertheless, the discovery of these particular objects and these unusual superstructures is really important in helping us narrow down the exact phenomena responsible for forming these ridiculously large structures. There are still definitely a lot of different unexplained phenomena and a lot of different mysteries out there, and a lot of different arguments to be made about how these various formations and various structures form to begin with, how they evolve and will evolve over time, 
and how all of this might also influence things on much smaller scales, the galactic scales that might affect us as well. So in other words, it's sort of once again the question of dark matter, the question of dark energy, and possibly the question of some other phenomena that are still being explored and understood by various experiments happening right now on planet Earth. Or the more we try to convince ourselves that we understand how the universe works using new theories, the more we realize that there is always a gap in some of those theories. Something still doesn't seem to work, and something still doesn't seem to add up. Which is of course why it's so exciting to actually live right now. There are still so many different mysteries and so many unexplained phenomena out there. Something that discoveries like this will hopefully help us understand all of this, maybe in the next few decades, maybe in the next few centuries, but maybe never. But it still doesn't mean we should stop trying. The more scientists look around and try to study all of this, the more we'll learn about everything around us. Well, for now, that's kind of all we know. An amazing discovery, a really cool new technique, and something that hopefully a lot more scientists will use to discover more of these unusual structures in some of the future studies. Until then, everything is in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.